we're back home, and it feels good to be back home. But, Frank, there's a whole new psychology involved now. Uh, playing at home more games than not the rest of the season, our guys have to guard against thinking that the home court's going to take, take care of things. And meanwhile, the opponent comes in with apprehensions and anxieties of their own and plays at their best. They stick together as a team. And as I said, we may find that we're complacent because we think the home court's going to help us. If that would take place, we'd be in trouble. And the other bit of psychology taking place is now we're going to start meeting these teams for the second round here in February. And uh, St. Vincent's is uh, the first of such cases. I take that back. We've already played Geneva twice and split with them. But we're going to start meeting our league opponents two times. And beating them once is one thing, but beating them a second time, it becomes more difficult to do. So we have to guard against some things like that. And they're a very talented team, St. Vincent. So all those things combined could be a, a very tough game tonight. Looking back, at the uh, Glenville State game, uh, that's quite a tune-up. They were a, uh, a nice team, and they gave you uh, really all the competition you wanted uh, through 40 minutes of basketball, didn't they? That's right, and we expected that. Uh, uh, we said it's a good exercise in getting ready for the real world, you know, in District 18. And uh, West Virginia State Schools always provide the real world in basketball. They're very, very competitive, and especially when you go down on their floors, so it was a good game. It was a good game to win, and uh, appreciate having that one under our belt. Now, you saw the Bearcats from St. Vincent last week. Uh, were you surprised by anything you saw, and uh, what can you expect maybe a little bit different tonight? Frank, we had scouted them three times before our game, and uh, there were no surprises. Uh, the coach has made mention a couple times to the news media that he would do things differently for tonight. And what that would be, I'm not quite sure. Uh, so, you know, whatever his surprises are are private to him. It could include uh, holding on the ball or being more patient with the ball. I really don't know. Well, Coach, we'll look at tonight. Who is your starting lineup tonight? Okay, it changes again, but uh, the names are so familiar to you that it uh, might not sound like a change. Uh, Theron Hogue will start in the back line, and uh, Donnie Crawford will start in the back line. Uh, Harold will move in from underneath to out front, uh, along with Paul Stanley and uh, Tim McConnell. Now, if you wonder what kind of a change that was, uh, uh, Donnie Crawford, for instance, did not start the last game. Right, and plus Harold now is playing out in the wing instead of the back line. So that's uh, quite a switch for the Jackets. We'll be looking forward to seeing the kind of new look, and good luck to you against the Bearcats tonight, Coach. Thanks, Frank. We'll be back with more of our pregame show in just a moment. But first, in the opening tap control for the Bearcats of St. Vincent, and it's Marty May with the tap going to Matthews. Matthews goes on the right side against the Waynesburg zone. Over there to uh, Randy Jordan. Jordan back outside to Matthews. They try the left side. Again, it's Jordan handling the basketball. Back on the point to Matthews. Jackets in the zone defense. Uh, bounce pass to uh, Jordan. Starts down the lane. Dumps it off underneath. Shot up. No good. By May. Follow up and good. By Obardo. Sean Obardo with the first bucket of the night. It's 2 0 St. Vincent's. Jacket into four foot. And it's Stanley over the timeline. Goes to the point to McConnell. Timmy will now set things up. They go right side to Harold Hamlin, who checks in the lane, has it knocked away, gets it back, goes top of the key to uh, McConnell, round the horn to Crawford, back to McConnell. McConnell by Matthews, dumps it off to Hogue. Hogue with a 15-footer, no. Rebound taken by St. Vincent, pulled down by uh, Jordan, and he throws it away, trying for the fast break. Jordan with a pass for Obarto, a little too long for the big senior to handle. It goes out of bounds, a turnover, and the Jackets will get it right back with another chance to tie. We've used a minute. They let Farron who shoot uh, uncontested that time from 15 feet, and it went off the back of the rim. Here's Hamlin with the drive to the baseline, puts up a six-footer, a brick, no good. Rebound St. Vincent, cleared uh, out to Matthews, forecourt, bounce pass underneath Obarto, up and in. Sean Obardo has uh, both St. Vincent buckets as the Bearcats have jumped down to a 4 nothing lead. Here's Waynesburg into fourth court again, right side to Hamlin. Again to the baseline, Harold turns, this time does not shoot, back out to McConnell. McConnell fakes into the lane, drives to the baseline, dishes it off Hope. Hope with a pass to Crawford, up and in. They're on Hope with the assist. Donnie Crawford on the money end. Good teamwork, good ball movement. And a little pressure in the backcourt by Tim McConnell that time, trying for the steal. But he drops back, and now the Jackets are in their traditional zone setup. As St. Vincent, nursing a two-point lead, moves it into fourth court. 
Goes to high post to Bay. He takes the jumper. No good. Tap up. No good. Rebound hold. Waynesburg. Outlet to, to McConnell. Waynesburg on the run. Fast break. McConnell to Stanley on the wing. He fires. No good. Rebound taken by Matthews for St. Vincent. Clears it four court to Jordan. Jordan pulls up. Pops. It's good. Randy Jordan, a little six, seven foot jumper, and it's back to a four point St. Vincent lead. 6 2 the score with uh, 17 50 left to play first half. Jackets four court. Here's Stanley with it outside. Puts it to the floor, goes by his man. Baseline to Havlin now with a bounce pass. Harold mishandles it, comes back outside with the dribble. Now goes to Stanley again along the baseline, but he can't get in. Dumps it back to McConnell. Timmy starts inside, looks for the dish, dumps it off underneath, and it's kicked by a St. Vincent player. Jackets will inbound it under their own basket. St. Vincent's going to the man, the man uh, in the beginning of the game, just like they did at the uh, at Geneva at Kennedy Hall. And the Jackets uh, turn it over on the inbounds play. Now we get a little pushing and shoving. Randy Jordan tried to mix it up underneath there, and I can't see who it is. That uh, was the object of Randy Jordan's anger, but Jordan uh, drawing with somebody. The official comes over, Doug Shample comes over, pulls Jordan away, takes him over to the bench, but no technical foul call. Frank? Yeah, wh what we had is probably a retaliation of something. Okay. Somebody, they were mixing it up, with, they were all bunched together, the Jackets in position, they went and it, and this happened away from the ball, something happened, Jordan lost his temper, and uh, no, no punches were thrown, but a lot of, uh, uh, what are you, yeah. a we lot of give, temper. We'll give credit to the season official. Yeah. He went right in the middle of it and shoved Jordan clean over. He shoved him 30 feet into the uh, bench, right into where Bernie Matthews hit, and they got a hold of Jordan, who was very hot. So he evidently picked up an elbow and retaliated for it. Jacket did turn it over on that play. Theron Hope got the inbounds play, pass and put it right on the baseline, out of bounds. So St. Vincent now into fourth court. Here's Jordan with a jumper from way outside. It's no good. Rebound taken by Mo Hill. It's up and good. Mo Hill on the follow. And it's an 8-2 basketball game. That's the biggest spread of the night thus far. St. Vincent by six. As we get set to move inside, 17 minutes left to play first half. Here's Hamlin down low. Low post to Crawford. Throws it away. Tries to hit Theron Hogue across the lane. Crawford had it in one low post. Hogue was across the lane. Crawford threw it through traffic, and it went out of bounds. And Rudy Brayson wants a timeout. 17.04 left first half. Waynesburg trails at St. Vincent 8, Waynesburg 2. And we'll be back out of the gym and some uh, little mini explosion in the first three minutes, right? Yeah, we saw this uh, all uh, around halftime uh, before coming out of the St. Vincent uh, crowd. Could be some paranoia sitting in. All right, so St. Vincent has it. Uh, Matthews from way outside. Jumper no good. Hamlin rebounds. Collides with Jordan. Foul called Jordan. Jordan going for the steal. Collides with Harold Hamlin. Jordan goes to the floor and gets up with a personal foul. That's his first and the first foul of the ball. Fans are going to be on number 25, Randy Jordan, the rest of the evening uh, because of uh, that little uh, temper tantrum he threw about a minute ago. So that's the uh, uh, inbounds play. That's the first foul called against St. Vincent in the ball game. Here's... Uh, Waysburg on the attack in fourth court. They go to Hamlin. Hamlin on the wing, drives inside, dishes it off to uh, Theron Hogue. Has a shot blocked out of bounds. It'll be St. Vincent basketball. Nice play that time by Mo Hill working against Harold Hamlin. Yes, it was, and it blocked shot. That Theron Hogue had the shot blocked. Great rejected back and then went off him into the stands. So on uh, Mo Hill's nice play, St. Vincent gets the ball back, leading 8-2. And uh, this is Jordan with it at the top of the key. Goes to the bounce pass to Matthews. Almost a steal by Hamlin. They go back to Jordan. Now down low. Stolen away by Hogue underneath. Hogue looks to McConnell at backcourt. Timmy. Long pass four court to Stanley who pulls up. 25-footer. No. Rebound. Tapped outside. We get a foul on the rebound. It's going to be against Waynesburg. There on Hogue over the back that time. On the rebound off Stanley's shot. That's a little out of Paul's range. Probably close to 28 feet. That's just a little too far. He shot that near the 28 foot, right, maybe a foot inside of it. Okay, so uh, here come the Bearcats once again, still with a six point lead as we move down to 15. 56 left to play in the first half. It's uh, Mo Hill outside with it, goes to Matthews. He's open, 20 footer, no. Rebound hold for Waynesburg, clobbered underneath, but no call. Outlet to uh, McConnell. McConnell into four court. McConnell to the baseline. McConnell dishes it off underneath. It's loose. McConnell gets it back. Goes to Hamlin. Hamlin in the lane. Pops and no. Rebound taken by St. Vincent. Pulled down by Oparto. And they don't waste no time getting into four court. But there's a steal by Stanley in backcourt. To McConnell. McConnell into four court for Waynesburg. To Hamlin. Hamlin drives. Puts it up. It's no good air ball. Rebound taken by St. Vincent. Ooh. Jacket shooting. Woeful here in the first half. Way off. Uh, on the line getting the break but can't convert it. 
So here's St. Vincent now on the attack, being more patient this time down the floor. They go cross court to Jordan. Jordan takes the J and goes to, to Matthews. Now into the low post, Obardo shot up, no good. Rebound, Hope. Outlet McConnell, knocked away from behind, but Stanley picks it up in four court. Stanley one-on-one -on -one with Jordan, foul called. Jordan going to be called for the personal foul. Stanley, the injured party. Jordan giving the elbow to Paul Stanley, who had a step on him, and it's the only way he can stop Paul from putting it in on the drive. Called by Dutch Shamble. Good, good play, Paul Stanley. Team second foul. That's also, I believe, the second on Jordan, is it not? Right. And uh, Weinsberg inbounds it from the side in four court. They go right underneath the Hogan. He throws it up and misses. Rebound is tied up. Jump ball called on the rebound. It'll be Waynesburg's ball. Their turn to inbound. Jackets are uh, shooting woeful tonight. They're shooting percentages at halftime. Well, right now they're shooting something, I think, under 15%, isn't it? They have, a, they have a slow start. As well. Yeah, they inbounded to Stanley around the horn. McConnell, McConnell underneath to uh, Hogue. Uh, they're on Hogue. Underneath, no good. Right under the basket. They're on. Misses the bunny. They can't buy a bucket. Rebound St. Vincent. Fast break. Jordan blocked from behind by Donnie Crawford. Donnie Crawford blocking Jordan from behind as he went in for the layup. And they call uh, no foul on the play. A clean block by Crawford. Good defensive play by the senior from Uniontown. Into the lineup, Byron Orman, who's drawn a start many, many nights so far. And, and he replaces Farrell and Hogue. We missed the money last time down the floor. He'll get a, a seat. Well, and St. Vincent inbounds it under the, uh, their own basket following the block shot by Crawford. They go to Mo Hill. Mo Hill's pass in the lane. Drug broken up. Stolen by Stanley. Out to McConnell. McConnell went backcourt. Over the timeline. Timmy, top of the circle. Down the lane. Stops and pops. It's no good. Again, the Jackets blow one from in the painted area. Fast break St. Vincent. Pass to Mo Hill too long. He has to save it from out of bounds. It goes to Oparto. The fast break is spoiled. So now the Bearcats will have to set up a play. Well, they now, go. now right. John is going to say, we're going to see a little coaching takeover. Uh, they're going to have patience. Oh. Here's Obardo turn around for the low post, up and in. Sean Obardo, they got it to him right under the basket. He turned and fired. He has six, and it's a 10-2 basketball game. St. Vincent leads, 13.50 to go in the first half. Waynesburg shooting woefully. Now, baseline to Hamlin. Low post, Crawford. Crawford foul underneath. As Donnie got the ball, we get a whistle, and up with the foul going to be against the Bearcats. Yeah, we're taking it right into them, and uh, that's definitely uh, Coach Maurice's strategy is to get the ball in the paint, and it's been in there. The only shot taken from the, uh, two shots taken from the outside, one by Paul Stanley. Foul on Marty May. On the inbounds play, we get a, well, I thought a uh, whistle, but no. Uh, going for the steal on the inbounds play, St. Vincent there to knock it away, and that was Marty May who knocked the ball out of bounds, so the Jackets will simply inbound it again. They're doing it at their end of the floor, right under their own board. That Shample being very patient, now there's a uh, jousting going on for uh, position on the throw-in play. McConnell inbounds it to Crawford, dishes it right back to Timmy along the baseline. He'll put it to the floor, bring it outside. Goes top of the key, looks over on the left, now goes in the lane to Crawford, baseline, Hamlin from the side, yeah! Harold Hamlin breaks the ice with a six-foot jumper from the baseline, and the Jackets come back within six. And the train's on track. Okay. All right. 13-15 left to play in the half. Waynesburg trailing by six. St. Vincent with the basketball. As Frank said, being more deliberate, no. From the side, shot up, no good by Mo Hill. Rebound taken by May. He dishes it back to uh, uh, Matthews to Hill again, and he shoots from the same place and makes it. Well, he don't miss two from that same place. He shot uh, the 18-footer from the corner, missed it, got it right back. Here's Stanley from way outside for Waynesburg. Again, a 25-footer, no good. Rebound, Stanley up and in. Foul call. Paul Stanley on the hustle, took a 25-foot jumper. It didn't go in, but he was right there to follow the shot. Went up for the layup, made it, was foul. Marty May has picked up the personal, his second. And the team fourth, Paul Stanley trying to convert a three-point play. Nice play, Paul Stanley. By the way, uh, by the way, if he makes the three-point play, he'll need just six more to uh, tie Ted McZuzek for uh, sixth place on the all-time scoring list to Waynesburg, and he does. And, uh, Stanley with three. And it's uh, uh, now, all of a sudden, a 12-7 basketball game. St. Vincent had a 10-2 lead just a few minutes ago. Here come the Bearcats into forecourt. Matthews at the wheel, goes to Jordan. In the lane, passes back outside to Matthews. Fakes the shot, goes baseline to Jordan. Jordan with a dish off underneath to Obarto. He puts it up. It's no good around the rim and out. Rebound taken by Hope or Almond for Waynesburg. Ahead to McConnell. Jackets on the run. Timmy down to the top of the key, dishes it off to Hamlin. He'll put it up, and it's no good. Follow Crawford, no good. Rebound St. Vincent. 
cleared out to Matthews. Matthews has a fast break going. He'll still up, takes a uh, pull up, takes a stop and pop. No good. Rebound Crawford, and he throw it away. Dottie took the rebound, cleared it out to midcourt for the break, but there wasn't anybody there to trigger it, and bang. It was out of bounds, and uh, St. Vincent gets it right back. Right now, the Jackets pull within five, 12 to seven. So uh, they've made the last three points, and St. Vincent having a hard time getting the ball into the basket. Okay, so now the uh, Bearcats uh, have the ball knocked away, but Jordan gets it right back. Now goes to Marty May, back outside with a bounce pass to Matthews, into the corner to Alberto on the right side. Alberto cross court to Jordan, right back to Matthews. Matthews starts in the lane, dishes it off back to Jordan. He's open, takes the jumper, and misses. Air ball, out of bounds, Waynesburg's ball. Jordan with the air ball from 15 feet. So whatever uh, whatever was infecting Waynesburg at the other end of the floor, that, that bug must have moved to the other end now, for, uh, and it's taken over at uh, St. Vincent. They can't shoot either. Right now, Tim McCardle uh, getting his composure, and let's see if the Jackets can get their composure. Okay, here's Allman down the lane for Waynesburg. Up and in, Byron Allman, the freshman, comes through with a bucket on a drive down the lane after getting the dish from McConnell. He took it about fifth at the 15-foot mark and just uh, put it to the floor with one dribble and then up and wham, a jump shot. So it's a three-point ball game now, 12-9. to nine. St. Vincent clinging to that lead after leading 10-2. It's now a three-point basketball game. And here's uh, Randy Jordan down the baseline. Puts up a shot. No good, but a foul called. Jordan will go to the line. Uh, Jordan took it right to the Jackets on the baseline. Picking up his first foul of the game, Harold Hamlin coming in the game. Coming into the ball game for St. Vincent to replace Marty May is Mark Owens, a 6'5 sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, had 10 points against Waynesburg a week ago tonight. Into the ball game now as Waynesburg moves it into four court. They go right side to Hamlin. Harold fakes into the lane. Now goes out to uh, Allman. Right back to Harold who starts down the baseline. Dumps it off back outside to McConnell. Clifty footer McConnell. No good. Rebound taken by St. Vincent Owens in there to pull it down. He'll clear it back court to Matthews. And uh, Mike will just walk it over the timeline. And they'll set it up. He goes to the bounce pass to Jordan. Jordan into the corner to Obarto, back out to Jordan, fakes into the lane, right back to Obarto, back to Jordan, and cross court to Matthews, who's open, takes the jumper, and it's no good. Rebound is loose, there's a battle for it underneath, pulled up by Mo Hill, it's up, no good. Rebound Allman on the floor. Byron Allman got that rebound while he was on the floor, clears it to McConnell, McConnell to Hamlin, Hamlin with a drive and a shot, and it's good. Harold Hamlin with four tonight, and Waysburg is pulled within two, 13 to 11, with 10-15 uh, left to play in the first half. There may no, be no better one-on-one -on -one player than Harold Hamlin in District 18. He is tremendous one-on-one. -on -one. They're on hold, getting ready to check back in for the Yellow Jackets. First chance he gets. St. Vincent on the attack with Matthews handling the ball. Top of the key goes cross court to Jordan. Right back to Matthews at the top of the circle. Thinks about a shot. Instead goes back to Jordan into the corner. Now down low, low post. Obarto up, good foul. Sean Obarto with a nice move after getting the pass down low will be at the line with a chance for a three-point play. Hallman picks up a, a 16 to 11 lead for St. Vincent as we move inside of 10 minutes to go in the first half. Here's Waynesburg now into four court. McConnell running the offense. They go uh, baseline right side to Hamlin, back out to Timmy. Timmy fakes uh, to the point, now takes it into the lane himself, takes a 15-footer and hits. McConnell with a 15-foot jumper, his first bucket of the night, 16-13. The Jackets have changed on defense. They have uh, Harold Hamlin right in the middle on the back line instead of playing the wing. And uh, on the wing is Byron Norman. Okay, here's Randy Jordan with the ball. Tipped away by McConnell. A steal by Timmy. Timmy all the way. Lays it up. It's good. And a foul. No, no, no basket. Graveling called on McConnell. Whoop. That's going to bring the house down. Timmy McConnell called for the travel on the fast break after the steal. Made the shot was hammered to the floor and gets up with nothing to show for it except a turnover. That's called a tough call, and I'm sure Rudy Maurice is going to tell Frank Fryer about that one. 16-13, St. Vincent leads. Nine minutes left to play first half. Shot up, St. Vincent good by Ron Rink, who's just come into the ball game. Ron Rink, a sophomore transfer student. Shot, Weisberg up, no good whistle, and the foul ball, and again, it's Randy Jordan. They've got to separate him, get him away from the pack. He's called for a personal foul after some contact, and now Bernie Matthews, I believe, going to take him out of the ball game. And and I don't think that's a bad move. He's picked his third up, and he's definitely paranoid tonight. Uh, he's looking for anything 
uh, for action. And Randy's going to take a seat, and his replacement comes into the game, Al Gist. Oh, uh, I believe it's Geist, but I don't know. Al Geist, a sophomore from Washington, D.C. On the foul, Waynesburg again fouls it. That's the 15 foul on St. Vincent. They go to McConnell. McConnell, top of the key to Allman. Byron Allman right back to Timmy, and he'll backpedal near midcourt, and he'll try to set something up. McConnell starts inside, goes into the corner to Allman, back out to Timmy with a uh, pass, and for a now baseline to Hamlin on the right. Hamlin fakes low, goes back to McConnell. He'll try the left side. Pulls up, takes a jumper, and it's in and out. Rebound is out of bounds. It will be St. Vincent basketball. And that sample calls one the fans over in the uh, corner don't agree with at all. Well, St. Vincent now inbounds it, and they get some pressure in backcourt by the Yellow Jackets, and uh, Geist goes cross-court to break the pressure into four-court to Oparto, right back to Geist. Geist starts down low, but he can't get it. Here's Rink with the ball. Rink baseline to Mo Hill, deep in the corner, but he comes right back outside to Rink. Ron Rink is in, replacing Matthews as point guard, and uh, the other guard is uh, Al Geist. Geist cross court with a rainbow to Rink. He'll bring it uh, back outside as he puts it to the floor. Holds up the one finger. Now goes to Mo Hill. 15-foot jumper. Mo Hill hits. Mo Hill with his uh, sixth point of the night. And it's 20-13 to 13 now. St. Vincent is Chuck Collins getting ready to check in for Waynesburg. Stanley with the ball now goes to into the corner to Hogue. Back outside to Allman. Allman fakes to uh, uh, Hamlin. Now goes to Stanley to the baseline. Jump shot. Stanley hits. Nothing but net for Paul, and he has five tonight. And it's back to a five-point basketball game. A steal by McConnell at that point. McConnell all the way up and in. Right. That is called a stainless steel right there. A Timmy McConnell stainless steel. That's a patented word coined tonight by Frank Fusick. And McConnell has them on their feet at College Gym. And he has four points. Almost a steal in backcourt again, and they throw it away. Again, the way first pressure forces the turnover in backcourt. St. Vincent cannot handle the pressure in the college gym right now. A very electric atmosphere, and St. Vincent wants a timeout. 7-12, rough to play in the first half. St. Vincent 20, Waynesburg 17. And they go into the lane to Theron Hogue, who puts up a shot off the glass. No good. Rebound taken by St. Vincent. A brick that time by uh, Theron Hogue. And St. Vincent leading by three, has the ball, 6.55 left to play in the first half. And Matthews back into the ball game at point guard, goes into the lane, rink, turnaround jumper, good. That's Owens, turnaround jumper, good. Mark Owens, first bucket of the night, 22-17 the score. Here's McConnell into fourth quarter to the Yellow Jackets, goes to Chuck Collins, who's just checked into the ball game. Now baseline to Hamlin on the right side, back out to uh, McConnell, around the horn, left side Collins, he's open in the corner, shoots, no good. Rebound, Stanley puts it up and in, all Stanley on the follow. Seven tonight, and it's 22-19. And we call those garbage points. There Paul was in the paint, and the ball bounced right to him, and he put it in. Again, here's the pressure in backcourt by the Yellow Jackets. This time, the Bearcats break it into four court with a long pass to Owens. Owens almost turns it over. The fans want to walk. Now a steal by Collins at midcourt. Collins all the way up in there. Chuck Collins stole it at midcourt, and his version of the stainless steel is good. And now more pressure in backcourt as the Jackets have come back within one. St. Vincent breaks it into four court. Oparto with the ball. Now pulls up, goes back to Matthews, right in front of us near midcourt. Matthews uh, with the ball on the hip. Slowly dribbles it towards the point. Now goes cross court to uh, Geist. Geist right back to Matthews. And uh, Matthews bounce past Oparto in the corner on the left side. Matthews again with a drive, dumps it off. To, uh, Owens. Owens with a jumper. No. Rebound is loose. Let's see. It's out of bounds. It's going to be St. Vincent basketball. And checking into the lineup for St. Vincent is Marty May. Marty May was uh, the guy instrumental in inciting the fans at the, in the last rebarb yeah. down at the uh, St. Vincent's Kennedy Hall. He was there uh, while the rumble was going on, uh, waving to the fans to get active vocally. So let's see. He's back in there now. Again, it's St. Vincent by one, 22-21. They jumped out to a big eight-point lead to start the game. The Jackets have been clawing back ever since. 5-18 left to play. And uh, here are the Bearcats in the person of uh, Geist with the basketball top of the key. Cross court to Matthews. Matthews in the lane. Mo Hill turn around. Jumper is good. Mo Hill in the lane. A 15-footer. He has eight at 24-21. Relentless is without... the word, John. Relentless. And yeah. that's what gets the... Uh, the uh, St. Vincent squad is here. Jack is trying alley-oop. It's not even close. And uh, the ball's tipped back out to Matthews. Now it's stolen back 
It's uh, Theron Hope giving it away from Matthews from behind. Four court to Hamlin. He pulls up. Jumper. No. And rebound taken by St. Vincent. Foul call on Waynesburg. Over the back. Very obvious. And uh, oh, Theron Hope going after the rebound. Out of position and out of control. Right on the back. His second. I'm sure. And uh, that being, well, I almost thought, I thought they were walking the other way to shoot. But no, the one and one's no way in. That's only team foul number four on Waynesburg. St. Vincent has five. Jackets drop back in their zone. McConnell out of the ball game now. Lee in at guard. And uh, here comes uh, Matthews in the forecourt for St. Vincent. He moves on the right side, goes into the corner to Obarto. Back to Matthews, a drive, dishes it off. May baseline the other side to uh, uh, Geist, and he'll bring it back out. Long rainbow cross court to Matthews again over on the right side. Mike Matthews, the uh, top of the key to Mo Hill, right back to Matthews in the corner. Uh, that's Obardo uh, handling the basketball there. They trap him, comes back outside to Matthews. 4-10 left to play in the first half. St. Vincent leads by three. They own the ball. And uh, here's Matthews uh, with a bounce pass into the corner. Geist from the side. Shoots no good. Rebound uh, tapped out to Lee. Lee in the fourth court to Stanley on the wing. Up good foul call. And Paul Stanley blocking on the on the call. Bernie Matthews is up on that one. Letting Frank Fryer know he thinks he got homer. And uh, that's not the case. Frank Fryer was in position that time. He's a great speedster official and gets down the floor. Good call. And... Paul Stanley trying for the three-point play ever closer to another uh, mouse. If this one goes in, he will now be on, in sixth place on the all-time scoring list, but it doesn't. So he's still tied with Ted McZuzik for sixth place. And he has nine tonight. 24-23. The Jackets miss a chance to tie there with the three-point play. 3.45 left to play in the first half. Waynesburg has not led in this ballgame. St. Vincent... Uh, being very deliberate now against the Waynesburg defense as they uh, move the top of the key to Matthews. Now they go uh, high post to, to uh, May around the horn to Geist. Geist blocked from behind by Hamlin, but he's called for a foul. Geist going up for the jump shot after he blew by Harold. Harold reaching up for the block, got the ball, but Frank Pryor says also got a piece of Mr. Geist. Well, they called the foul. Uh, it, Harold uh, wasn't him. It was on oh, the was it? side. No, oh. it, was, it was called on Farron Hood. Oh. And Farron picked up his third. Crawford will be coming in undoubtedly to replace Theron Hose. At the line shooting two is Al Geist. 9.5, a ball game average makes the first. And uh, Theron is out, and uh, Don Crawford has indeed checked back in. So Geist can make it a three-point ball game again if he uh, converts to on ring. The uh, sophomore transfer student out of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. At 16 against Waynesburg, off the bench last Wednesday night. And here's Waynesburg, high, uh, high post to Hamlin. He drives, puts it up good, and a foul called. Harold Hamlin got it at the high post, just took command right down the lane, put it up and in, and he'll be at the line with a chance for a three-point play. Basket's good, John. Yep. And picking up his third foul, Marty May. So there's only been six fouls called against St. Vincent. They have seven now. Okay, that's a seven. Well, Marty May with three. Also, Randy Jordan with three. That's two uh, St. Vincent starters in foul trouble. Jordan is on the bench already, and May will probably soon come out. Hamlin is at the line with a chance to give Waynesburg the lead. Uh, to tie the ball game, I should say, and he does. So the Jackets have not led in the ball game, but they have battled back to tie. Again, full court pressure by Waynesburg. St. Vincent still in backcourt. Still in backcourt. Cross court to Matthews. Still in backcourt. Matthews trapped at midcourt. He's fouled by Paul Stanley. Uh, Chuck Collins going for the steal at midcourt off the trap. Collins called for the foul. And uh, Matthews will not be going to the line. That's only team foul number six, so they were inbounded from the side. And Chuck uh, picking up his first foul of the game. Chuck has uh, scored two points. Rudy Marisa keeping Paul Stanley and Harold Hamlin in for the complete first half. Three minutes left to play in the first half. Ball game tied at 26. Now a foul away from the ball and a foul on Kevin Lee. I was watching the ball. This happened in the in the lane itself and I guess they got him for an elbow or something. Right. And as an offensive player was floating through and behind Kevin, he threw an elbow at him and uh, did make contact. Frank Fryer uh, calling the foul. Kevin's first, and now the bonus is in. 
So the bonus is in either way, and at the line to shoot the one and one is Marty May for St. Vincent. Misses the one and one. Hamlin rebounds Lanesburg. Throws it to Stanley. Ball into four court. Pass to Lee. Lee pulls up. Jumper. No. Rebound is taken by St. Vincent. Pulled down. Dropped by Marty May. And now they'll work it the other way. No backcourt pressure this time for the Yellow Jackets. And Timmy McConnell getting ready to check back into the lineup for Rudy Marisa. Right here's St. Vincent, the uh, green and gold outside to Matthews, almost threw it away. Uh, nice job by Mike Matthews to save it. He goes uh, to Marty May, right back to Matthews, bounce pass in the corner to Rink. Rink with a move inside, dishes it off, and a uh, foul called off the steal. They went for the dish. Chuck Collins uh, going for the steal, call for the foul. His second, and he's upset about that. Dutch Ample giving him the old evil eye, seeing if he's going to say much. But Chuck, being a mature player, junior transfer from IUP, turned his head and walked away. And he also uh, remains in the lineup. And checking back in is Tim McConnell for Kevin Lee. Kevin only had about a two-minute stay, and I don't think Rudy Maurice had liked what he saw. At the line, one and one, no good. Rebound, Crawford, and they, again, Crawford throws it away. That's the second time tonight he's thrown away a rebound here in the first half. Pulled down the rebound, cleared it out to mid-court area with a long pass, and it was intercepted. That's an instant replay. Now, again, they go outside to uh, Matthews for St. Vincent. Matthews puts it to the floor, cruises to the left side, goes into the corner along the baseline to Obardo, back to Matthews. Matthews starts down the lane, now dumps it off to May, one-hander May, no good. Rebound Collins, Waynesburg. Clears it backcourt to McConnell. Timmy McConnell blocking signals as Chris Green gets ready to check in for the Yellow Jackets. Here's McConnell into fourth court, goes to uh, Chuck Collins. Collins backpedals near the point, now goes to Crawford as the Jackets go into their five-man hit. Eight weave offense, score still tied, 26-26 with a minute and 39 to go. Rudy trying to shorten up the first half and uh, perhaps uh, maybe even go for the last bucket if they could do it. Collins and Hamlin handling the ball over the left side. Now they go to McConnell. St. Vincent uh, just being bothersome on defense, not really attacking on defense yet. Now baseline, Crawford drive, shoot, no good. Crawford just blew the uh, layup on the drive. Got a nice pass in there, but Donnie just couldn't convert it. They all caved in on Paul Stanley that time. Don Crawford made one step past the defender who was uh, overshifted on Paul Stanley and couldn't convert. So, after a good ball game Monday night, Donnie Crawford back in the doldrums again here in the first half tonight. And we're still tied at 26. Now a little cat and mouse the other way as St. Vincent uh, going into the big stall as they maybe want to wind this clock down, go for the last shot, take a two-point lead into uh, the dressing room. 45 seconds left to play. Yeah, Mo Hill with the ball outside, dumps it off to Matthews. Matthews starts in the lane, pulls up, baseline, Oparto shot blocked by Hamlin. Hamlin with a loose ball in backcourt. 32 seconds to go, clears it to Timmy McConnell. McConnell holds up his hand as if to say, all right, final shot. 25 seconds to go. Waysburg gonna wind that clock down. Here's Hamlin with it out near midcourt. Nice defensive play by Harold Hamlin. Yes, it was, and a five-man eight set up again. They're gonna do the weave and get it down, and I'm sure Paul Stanley or Harold Hamlin's gonna be looking Ten for the Ten seconds ball. to go, they get it to uh, Collins, right back to McConnell. Five seconds to go, a steal by St. Vincent in backcourt. It's Matthew Stanley gets it back. One second to go, he gets off a shot, it won't count. It won't count, Stanley got the shot off right after the buzzer sounded, but that's the end of the first half, and we're exactly where we were when we started, all tied. At halftime, the score, Waynesburg 26, St. Vincent 26. Um, held ball rule, so uh, the Bearcats started off. Glad you're with us from Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. This is WANB-FM, Waynesburg, Washington, Uniontown. St. Vincent inbounds to the second half. They go into the corner to Mo Hill. Back to Matthews, right back to Hill. Cross-court pass to Jordan, who starts the second half with three fouls. Jordan brings it to the top of the key. Now goes with a bounce pass on the left side to Matthews, right back to Jordan. He's tied up, has to go back to Matthews. Matthews into the lane, dishes it back outside. Jordan, jump shot, good. Jordan with a jumper from the outside, assist by Matthews, and first blood of the second half goes to St. Vincent. Now, uh, Jack is trying to tie first time down the floor, second half. They go along the baseline to Pushkar, who starts the second half. He goes back out to Pagano, 18-footer, Timmy, no good. Rebound taken by St. Vincent. Outlet pass is almost thrown away. It's uh, picked up by Matthews. Matthews with a drive and a shot, good. Matthews picked up the loose ball and took it all the way from midcourt himself. And now it's a 30 to 26 basketball game as the St. Vincent now takes command to start the second half as they did in the first half. 
push car gets it along the baseline left side for Waynesburg top of the key to Meccano into Hamlin he drives and shoots no good but he's fouled Yes, that time Matthews tried to sneak one in, and he was caught by the official Frank Pryor and Harold. I'm not quite sure whether that would be a shooting foul or not. I they're lining up is. like they're going to send him to the line. That was so. a close one. But Matthews commits his first foul, so uh, he'll be at the line shooting two. That's the team first of the second half. For Harold is uh, second trip to the line. He is one for one so far tonight. One for two. Uh, one for one is correct. As no good. Waysburg just cannot buy a basket tonight. He had a bad night uh, down in Gilmer County, uh, West Virginia, uh, the other night in free throw shooting, but had a good night on the floor. Makes a second, so it's a three-point basketball game, 30 to 27. That's eight tonight so far for Harold Hamlin. And here come uh, the Bearcats into fourth court. This is Matthews We're running the attack. He goes left side this time to Jordan. Now over on the right to Mo Hill. Jumper good. Mo Hill puts it in. That's uh, double figures for Mo now with 10. Weisberg puts it to fourth court. Long pass to Hamlin. Down the lane. Up and no good. Again, Hamlin misses from in the painted area. And we get a foul of the rebound against Waynesburg. Pushkar picking up his first personal over the back on the rebound. So all this is adding up to is the Jackets do not have position once they let go of the ball, and they constantly are going over the back and being called. Uh, Theron Hogue went over the back three times in the first half. 32-27, St. Vincent leads. They have the ball. Jordan outside with it. Cross court to Matthews. Matthews into the corner to Oparto. Back to Matthews. Puts it to the floor. Takes it to the top of the key. Goes to the bounce pass now to Jordan. Around the horn to Oparto. Working against Theron Hogue. Trap dishes it back outside. Around to Matthews. Matthews dumps it back to uh, Jordan. Baseline Oparto. Up blocked by Hamlin. A foul call on the play. Hamlin up with a block. But uh, Frank Fryer there to call the personal foul. And he got him with the body that time. Frank Fryer is indicating to the dislike of the fans. However, I feel it was a fairly good call by Frank Fryer. And Harold has now picked up his second foul. That's the second team foul of the Jackets as well. Fouled in the act. Obarto at the line to shoot a pair. And uh, here's the first. It is good. It's the front of the iron and went through. So Obardo is into double figures with 10. He'll be high in the ball game with 11 if the next one goes in. Ron Rink getting ready to check in for St. Vincent. No good. The foul shot. Rebound Hogue for Waynesburg. Outlet to McConnell. Timmy into fourth court. Pulls up. Top of the circle. Goes to Stanley on the left. In tight. Back out to uh, McConnell. Now into the corner. Left side, Harold Hamlin. Back to McConnell. To uh, Pushkar, who's open. Shoots and hits. Well, Rich Pushkar has uh, found the range. He hits the uh, little 16-17 footer. And it's 33-29. Yeah, it and it took uh, almost uh, two and a half minutes for the Jackets to score their first field goal. Here comes uh, St. Vincent again. Now Matthews works over on the left side, moves some people around, goes into the corner on the left side to Mo Hill with a bounce pass, back out to Matthews, starts down the lane, dumps it off to Jordan. Jordan uh, with a dribble, now back out top of the key to Matthews, will dribble over on the right. He uh, lobs it cross court, Marty Mays open, takes a shot, it's no good, tap no good, foul call. The foul will be against St. Vincent. Marty May, I believe, we'll see. Yeah, 45, they call Mo Hill for a push-off. His first of the game, Mo Hill has been uh, uh, very instrumental so far in the Bearcats' uh, lead at this time by four points, 33-29. Second team foul at St. Vincent in the half, 33-29, as Frank said. 17 minutes left to play the game. Baseline, Stanley for Waynesburg on the give-and-go off of Havlin. Shot no good, but Stanley fouled to go to the line. It's an important finger that Dutch, uh, the fingers that Dutch Champel throws up right now are very important. And Marty May has picked up his fourth. Okay, so, so May in big trouble with four. Randy Jordan, another starter, in trouble playing with three. And uh, May's coming out of the ball game, and it uh, looks like Mark Owen's going to replace him. Stanley at the line for two, makes the first. The call Stanley now has passed Ted McZuzik and is now in sixth place by himself on the all-time scoring list. Next on the list is Tim Tyler, but Paul has quite a way to go to catch Tim. But he can do it the next three or four games, I guess. Stanley makes them both from the line. He now has 11 tonight, and it's 33-31. All of a sudden, the Jackets have come back, closing the gap to within two. As we tick inside, 17 minutes left to play in the game. We were tied 26 all at the half. 
Now baseline on the left side for St. Vincent to Obardo, tied up there, goes back out to Jordan, around the horn to Rink. Rink back to Jordan, now a bounce pass to Matthews on the right. Directs some traffic in the lane, goes with the rainbow, cross court to Jordan, right back to Matthews, he's open, shoots, no good. Rebound is loose, Hamlin up with it for Waynesburg, has it knocked away, gets it back. Goes to McConnell, long pass, four court, push car, stolen away by Jordan. For St. Vincent, we go the other way, Jordan, bounce pass to Matthews, baseline, Matthews with a pass underneath, knocked out of bounds, but it'll be St. Vincent basketball. That was a, uh, quite a turnover that time. The long pass push car really not in position to catch it. Okay, so St. Vincent inbounds it at their end of the floor from the baseline to go out to Jordan. He brings it back to the point with the dribble. Now goes left side to Matthews. Matthews checks the lane. Nothing there. Cross court to Jordan. Baseline, Mo Hill. Rainbow back out to Matthews. Matthews uh, dumps it off to uh, Rink. Rink from the side hits. Ron Rink, turnaround jumper from the side. He has four, and it's 35-31 uh, St. Vincent. Here's Waynesburg now in the fourth court, tried to set something up. Stanley with it in uh, the high post area, turns and fires. It's no good. Forces it up over Jordan. Rebound St. Vincent ahead of Jordan. One on two, fast break. Jordan has the ball knocked away by Hope. McConnell up with a rebound with a loose ball. McConnell in the fourth court. McConnell on to Hamlin. Stops that. Harold Hamlin off the dish for McConnell. Gets the jam on the fast break. And it's 35, 33. That's the old backbreaker right there. And sometimes that has turned a lot of ball games around for the Jackets this year. Okay, so now St. Vincent clinging to a two-point lead. Works the perimeter of the Waynesburg zone. Matthew says, let's be a little patient this time down the floor, guys. And he has his hand on his hip as he dribbles near midcourt. Now one finger in the air, and he sets the offense in motion. And uh, we move now to 15-10 left to play. Kevin Lee and Byron Allman getting set to check into the Waynesburg lineup. Here are the Bearcats now going into a bit of a stall, sitting on that two-point lead. It's Frank with the basketball on the right side, goes back out to Matthews at the point. Inside 15 minutes to play in the game. Mo Hill comes out to take the pass, and he goes right back to the point guard, Matthews. Matthews cruises on the left side, now pulls up, goes uh, with the pass to Obarto, but they get it right back to Matthews. And Matthews again brings it out near midcourt. Matthews to the top of the circle. Again, he goes to Obarto over there on the left. And Frank uh, St. Vincent going to eat up uh, as much of the clock as they can, it appears, this time down the floor. Yeah, we'll have to uh, look over Byron Orman, who's standing up in front of us at the uh, bench area. Well, well, unfortunately, there's only a wall behind us, so we can stand if we want to. Okay, so uh, here's Mo Hill now with it uh, for St. Vincent, top of the circle, but he doesn't do anything with it except go back to Matthews at the point. Over the rink on the right side, into the corner to Jordan. He shoots for the side and hits. Randy Jordan hits a shot from 18 feet. And Weisberg quickly to four court. Push guard drive, shoots, blocked from behind. No foul call. Mo Hill on the block. And St. Vincent up with the, with the rebound. Off the block. And uh, again, St. Vincent into four court with a two-point lead. Okay, we have a little uh, skir uh, something happening over here. Bill Hardesty coming in. And I'm uh, not really sure what's going on, but they're talking to the Waynesburg bench. They have a policeman there as well. Okay, so uh, here is uh, St. Vincent with the ball. This is uh, Ron Rink, cross court to Mo Hill, back out to Matthews at the top of the key. Matthews turns, has the ball knocked away from behind. It's loose, but Matthews gets it back, starts in the lane, pulls up, dishes it off to Jordan. Jordan with a move, bounce pass outside to Rink. Rink with a move and a shot up and good. Ron Rink, nice move. He has six tonight. And it's 37-33. Rudy Marisa wants a timeout. 13-13 left in the ballgame. St. Vincent 39, that is. And Waynesburg 33 will be back in one minute. Team left to play in the ballgame. Jackets uh, with their hands full here. And quite frankly, uh, Mr. Busick in a little bit of a trouble. A little bit of a, a little bit of trouble here. Yes, they are. Uh, this is uh, probably the most they've uh, had to come back. Of course, Cal State earlier in the year. But during the season, uh, yeah. the second part of the season in January, this has been a real test. Uh, you knew down at uh, West Liberty that nothing was going to happen to yeah. the team, but this one is, good, is a very tap. Let's see the second half. They break it with a long pass, but it's thrown away by Hope. Hope throws it right back. Jordan with the intercept for St. Vincent. He drives and dishes it off underneath on the shot, but a foul called on the play against Waynesburg. Al uh -huh. Hammond uh, with the body, picking up his third personal foul. So Aaron Hogue has three. Al Hamlin has three. Look at it. It could be that the Jackets might be, uh, it could it be that they're just trying to make something happen. They're, they're trying to make, they're, they're trying to force the ball down the floor and uh, uh, little observation. trying to make something happen. Exactly. Uh, 
instead of letting natural talents take over, they want to they want to hurry up and pick up six points on one trip down, and they can't do it. You have to be patient. The first foul shot, Jordan at the line, and makes the first and the second. He has nine tonight, and now it's 41-35, St. Vincent. Jordan comes out of the ball game now, and in to replace him will be number 21, and that's Mark Owen. Relentless is the word tonight. Now yep. with the Bear can't spin. Bear on hold, bounce pass, Byron Allman, baseline drive, shoots, it's up, it's around the rim and out. Rebound, Hamlin, foul called on the play. It'll be against St. Vincent. That ball rolled around and around, and then came down, down off the iron. And the foul on St. Vincent on the rebound attempt, it was not on the shot. So uh, Waynesburg will inbound it from the baseline. That's uh, team foul number four. And here's Stanley from outside for Waynesburg. Yeah, Paul Stanley hit uh, that packed 18-footer of his. 13 tonight for him. Again, the full court pressure by Waynesburg. In backcourt, bothered with it a little bit. His rink goes cross court to Matthews. Matthews breaks the plane of the uh, timeline into four court. Now they go to the bounce pass to rink right back to Matthews. And the Matthews at the point now will set up a play. On the right side, Oquarto back to Matthews. 12 minutes left to play in this ball game. Waynesburg trails 41-37. And St. Vincent going to use up as much of the clock as they can this possession. A little keep away here as they go with the bounce pass on the left now to a Ron Brink. This is the kind of action that uh, has frustrated other teams. And we've seen uh, Weisberg uh, put on the stall and kind of uh, make things happen. Let's see if uh, it has the same psychological effect on the Yellow Jackets here. Good yeah, tactic by Bernie Matthews at this point in time. Uh, he doesn't want to run with the Jackets, and the more that he can eat off the clock and shorten it up, you are on the road. He is a four-point lead, doing the right thing. 11-10 left uh, to play in the basketball game. St. Vincent on top, 41-37. And uh, they just worked the perimeter of the Waynesburg defense. Not trying to penetrate at all. Now Kevin Lee comes out to apply a little pressure to Matthews as he starts down the lane, puts up his shot. It's no good. Rebound Hogue and a foul call to the play. Against St. Vincent Bearcats, and I believe it's going to be on uh, Matthews for uh, a blocking call after he let the ball go, and it is. It's his second personal of the game. The Jackets now a chance to cut it to two. And Jordan is coming back into the ball game for St. Vincent, playing with three personal fouls. That's team foul number five. Waynesburg brings it into four court. Kevin Lee running the attack now. McConnell on the bench. Lee uh, starts down the lane. Now pulls it back outside. Waynesburg's going to be delivered. Now they go to Allman. He's open. Takes the jumper. It's no good. Line drive. Brick from the yeah. side. And a foul called. Byron Allman following the shot. Uh, the loose ball was picked up underneath by St. Vincent's Ron Rink. And uh, Byron Allman fouled it. And that's the fourth team. It might be insignificant now, but uh, when the bonus comes in, we have 1040 remaining in the game. Four team fouls against the Jackets, five against the Bearcats. Now, let's see. This is Rink bringing it over the timeline now for St. Vincent as Matthews is out of the ball game. Rink goes left side to Mo Hill, back out to uh, uh, Owens. Owens closely guarded there, trapped almost a steal, but they go, they get it away in time to Ron Rink. Rink to the baseline. Uh, can't get a shot there. Brings it back outside with a dribble to the top of the circle. Now uh, with the hand up in the air again, starts down the right side, pulls up, and they're trapped there, almost a steal. He's in a little trouble, dishes it off. At the baseline, Owens, a shot up, no good. Rebound is brought for, taken by Allman for Waynesburg, but it's stolen right back, goes out of bounds, Waynesburg's ball. And it's not heavy under the boards. Look out, boy, there's some gravity and pushing going on. Waynesburg, long pass, four court, Hamlin's. Puts it up and in. I thought he was going to stuff it at the last minute. Just laid it up and in, just as nice as could be. Waynesburg back within two. 9.45 left to play in this basketball game. All momentum is switched now. Rudy Mercy seems to have gotten control of the situation. And the Jackets uh, doing the job defensive. Getting very aggressive on defense, trapping the ball, uh, particularly when Rink seems to get his hands on it. Now Rink starts to the baseline. They trap him there and it knocks out of bounds for the St. Vincent's basketball. Rink cannot handle the trap too well. Coming back in uh, right now is Mike Matthews. And Rink is coming out. So Bernie Matthews says, uh, hey, son, go in there and show him how it's done. 
So now we get a timeout, Waynesburg. 9.29 left in the ballgame. St. Vincent 41, Waynesburg 39. 9.29 to go. St. Vincent inbounds it following uh, the timeout by Bernie Matthews. And a steal by Kevin Lee off the inbounds with a foul call on the play. Let's see, is it going to be on Lee or is it going to be on St. Vincent? It's on oh, St. Vincent. Kevin right. Lee had the position to intercept. And the uh, St. Vincent uh, Mark Owens gave him a push because he knew he'd been had. It's like an intercepted pass, John. And then the uh, cornerback cuts right in front, and there he was. He, he so Kevin Lee takes the cue from Kevin McConnell, and a shot out. Timmy McConnell. Yeah, no, yeah. Follow who? So so the shot no good by Stanley, followed by Allman, but they say no offensive goaltending. They say the ball was in the cylinder when Allman ran, jammed that rebound through, so it won't count. That's right. Exciting, but it don't mean anything. And that's like a long foul ball in baseball. Ball's up in the cylinder. You can't touch it. It went straight up. Well, 9-19 remain, and it's still a two-point basketball game. Matthews back in at point guard, replacing Rink. Now Bernie Matthews going for some better ball handling. Obarjo now near midcourt. Tied up, has to go uh, with the bounce pass uh, to Matthews. He goes to Jordan. Now Jordan back out to Obarjo. It looks like St. Vincent is going into a bit of a weave offensive cell, sort of. Uh, we do have some people standing around. Bo Hill is just standing there with his hands on his hips, not yeah. doing anything. Well, the jackets just, are just admiring the ball handling of Jordan. Very seldom, man to man, they're in it. Okay, and they try to trap on the basketball with uh, Jordan, but they can't. He'll put it to the floor now and uh, starts down the lane, pulls back, and almost a steal by Kevin Lee, but Jordan get it back, got it back once to Matthews. Cross court to a Barjo. Down to 8.30 to go, and now a foul. Paul Stanley calls the personal foul for Waynesburg. And uh, that's team foul number five. Paul got pulled that time. Uh, Matt, Mike Matthews got right in his path, and Paul didn't see him and, and ran him right down and called for a charge. And now, Arnie Matthews getting into a little bit of an argument now and, uh, uh, with uh, uh, Frank Fryer, the official. And uh, Fryer answers him right back. So he's yelling at each other there. 8.20 left to play. 41-39. St. Vincent leads. They own the ball. They've led through most of this game. I don't know if Plainsburg's ever led. Now another foul on Stanley at midcourt. Going for the steal on Ovardo. Paul Stanley called for the steal, for the foul, getting him on the arm. And uh, two quick ones there on the senior try captain. Well, now the one and one's in. Rudy Marisa wants a timeout, John. 8-12 to go. 41-39. St. Vincent leads and will be back. Teams with six. So the next whistle, either way, will have the one and one in. And the Bearcats uh, inbounded in backcourt to Matthews. And uh, he'll just walk it over the timeline. Kevin Lee there to pick him up at midcourt. And uh, he dumps it off to a Marshall. Allman all over him, but he gets a pass to Jordan. Jordan starts around Stanley to the foul line, now pulls up and fires baseline. Obardo shot up, no good. Uh, clean block, the rebound, St. Vincent up and in. A nice block underneath by the Yellow Jackets, but Owens there to pick it up and put it in. 43-39, St. Vincent. Now Waynesburg into four court. Byron Allman left side with the dribble. Now comes back outside to Hamlin. 15-footer, yeah! Harold Hamlin, 12 tonight. 43-41. Now they're going to trap them at midcourt. No backcourt pressure for the Yellow Jackets with 7.29 to go. Bernie Matthews wants a timeout for St. Vincent. Seven. So, uh, you called uh, St. Vincent relentless a little while ago in their uh, attack, and uh, Jackets being equally as relentless here in the second half. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, Kevin Lee, the freshman from Charlotte, Pennsylvania, remains in the game. Uh, Tim McConnell, uh, it appears, is having an off night and detected by the coach and is benched. So, uh, here's St. Vincent in the fourth court, uh, 7.15 to go. Kevin Lee closely guarding Matthews. Matthews by him down the lane, bounce pass, Bo Hill shot up, no good, blocked by Hamlin, loose ball up and in, and that's Bo Hill on the follow. That's the second time in a row, Waynesburg has blocked the shot uh, from under the basket, but uh, St. Vincent has come up with the bucket anyway. This time it was Bo Hill, he has 12, 45-41. Jackets with the ball, left side, uh, this is Lee, goes top of the circle to Stanley. Stanley starts down the lane, now pulls up, now goes to the baseline, and is trapped over there, in some trouble, throws it away. Right underneath the basket, threw it away, right into the hands of Bo Hill. He, uh, that was a, a turnover, he couldn't do anything else, he just dribbled himself in the corner, got double teamed, and threw it across the painted area, a clean interception. 
So here's St. Vincent now leading by four in the four court. And we're down to 6.30 to go. Jordan with it, top of the circle, trapped there, goes cross court to Matthew. Matthew spakes into the lane and is fouled from behind by Kevin Lee. Kind of a little, excuse me, a kind of a foul there, but uh, maybe now uh, they're going to start calling it tight the rest of the way. Well, uh, I believe Tim McConnell's about ready to come in for Kevin, and he's going to play the last six minutes and 18 seconds on this game. All right. At the line for St. Vincent, now that the one and one is in, is Bernie Matthews. And uh, this will be his first trip to the uh, strike this evening. And a chance to up the lead to five, and he misses it around the rim and out. Rebound Stanley Waynesburg in backcourt, dumps it off to McConnell. McConnell quickly into fourth court, now pulls up as he crosses the timeline, goes to the right to Allman. Back out to McConnell, around the rim, around the uh, horn, I should say, Stanley. Now Hamlin on the left, back out Allman. On the right side, Stanley with a move to the baseline, jump shot blocked, loose ball. Uh, Waynesburg up with it. Hamlin turns and shoots and down. 14 tonight for Hamlin, 45-43. Again, Waynesburg has closed the gap to two. Harold's the franchise tonight. He's kept him in the game. What can you say? Uh, it's uh, Waynesburg's game to try to take control of now. They're down by two. They trap Jordan in mid-court, and he, they force him out of bounds. The Jackets force another turnover with their defense. They trap Jordan in mid-court as he tried to get around the trap. Dribbled it on the out-of-bounds marker, and the Jackets get it right back with a chance to tie. Frank Pryor calling the close call. He dribbled it on the end line. 5.30 left to play in the ball game. Waynesburg with the ball. Allman left side. Starts it. Now comes now stops his dribble. Goes cross court to McConnell. They almost throw it away. Timmy there to save it. He says, settle down. You can see what he's sign language. They go uh, into the corner on the right side to Hamlin. Hamlin, long pass to McConnell, who's open, takes the jumper, it's no good. Rebound taken by St. Vincent, still it by uh, Bearon Hogan backcourt to uh, Hamlin at the top of the circle, knocked away, still it by St. Vincent. We go the other way on the fast break of Bordeaux, down the lane, up and in, coast to coast for Sharno Bordeaux following the steal. And it's 47-43. Jackets cannot get any closer than two. Almost a steal by St. Vincent, and then they do, and a, let's see. No, it's out of bounds to Waynesburg. I thought Bo Hill stole, took it away from Harold Hamlin, but in doing so, he dribbled it out of bounds. If the Jackets uh, do pull this game out, it's definitely a come from behind, and they're going to have to do it with 454. Stanley from the side, no good, rebound, Almond, no good, rebound, hold up, and good. They're on hold on the second follow, and again, Waynesburg is back within two. Now we have four. 40 left to play in the ball game. And the heat's on. The Jackets are coming to the offensive boards and really hit them. There's Mo, uh, Randy Jordan being fouled as he tries to blow by uh, Byron Allman coming down the, the court right at midcourt. And Allman got him uh, reaching in. So uh, now uh, Jordan will go to the line to shoot one and one. And Rudy Marisa going to the shooting uh, team. He's bringing in Jeff Collins and picking out Byron Allman. And Jordan is three for four at the line. Tonight. 4.35 left. Jordan at the line with a chance to up the St. Vincent lead to three with the one and one. And he don't. No good. Rebound is loose. Who has it? Bo Hill has it in a foul. A fouling call on Theron Hope forced that. Bo Hill pulled down the rebound. Theron Hope tied him up and forced the turnover. So now the Jackets again with a chance to tie as we move down to 4.30 left to play in the ball game. Here comes Waysburg. Chuck Collins into the game, gets it on the left side, goes back to McConnell at the top of the key. On the right side down to Collins. He fakes a lob into the lane, goes back to uh, uh, McConnell, right back to Collins. He shoots it in and out. Free down St. Vincent. In and out. And there to pull it down was Marty May. You talk about a ball that was in the hole and just rattled and jumped right back out again. The Jackets now two points down. We move inside. Four minutes left to play. St. Vincent with a two-point lead in the ball. Matthews, top of the circle, dishes it off. Started down the lane and came back out and passed it off. So now uh, it's uh, Jordan with it, way out near midcourt. Jordan has the ball knocked away from behind, but a foul called on the uh, attempted steal. Collins called for reaching in for Waynesburg. And again, Jordan will go to the line. No one in real serious foul trouble for the Jackets, but we do have three players with three. Hamlin has three. Pushkar has, uh, I'm sorry, Allman has three, and also Chuck Collins with three. At the line, Jordan, one and one is good. 
big foul yeah. shot yeah. by Hart. He missed the uh, one prior to that, and uh, and then called. Bo Hill was called for traveling. What a play that was to turn around. But now they're getting uh, back, and they've made the first of a one and one. Second on the way, and it too is good. Jordan makes them both. He has 11, and it's 49-45. 3.49 left to play in this basketball game. And Chris Green goes into the lineup for the Jackets. And now McConnell brings it over the timeline. He looks on the right, goes there to Collins. Collins uh, puts it to the floor, now comes back to uh, McConnell near midcourt. McConnell now starts inside, starts down the lane, pulls up, goes baseline, Hamlin, jumper, Harold, no good. Rebound, Ooh. Collins, Flaysburg, stripped away underneath, and we get a whistle, ball out of bounds, Flaysburg's ball. That time, and uh, Fishbar is coming in now for Collins, so uh, a lot of shifting going on. Now the coaching takes place, the last three minutes and 29, as the personnel begin to change. Four minutes, four point lead, I should say, 329 left to play in the game. Waynesburg inbounds it, a steal with a foul call. The foul will be on St. Vincent, and I believe Chris Green will go to the line. Yes, and it's on Matthews. It's going to be his third. Mike Matthews picking his third, the point guard, son of the coach. Chris Green, an 82% free throw shooter so far on the season. He is uh, 14 for 17 from the line. And St. Vincent giving Waynesburg all they want tonight. Oh, oh man. There's, well, at stake here, first place. If the Jackets win, they're all alone in first place. Still, if they lose, there is a three-way tie for first place in District 18. Waynesburg, St. Vincent, and Westminster will all be 6-2. and two. John, you have a mind like a steel trap that Waynesburg ever lead in this ball game. No. Uh, no, they never did. They were as close as uh, tie. That's is it. Yep. Okay, at halftime, 26-26. Right. This has been a giant 20-minute over. Never buried. It's never been tied in the second half either. At the line, with a chance to bring Waynesburg within two with a one and one up and in. Chris, Chris Green comes through the freshman from Washington D.C. Chris seeing a lot of action early in January and in. Also, this is the yeah. second. Rebound Hamlin for Waynesburg. Jump ball call. Harold with the rebound tied up, and I believe Bo Hill tied him up. But it's Waynesburg's turn to inbound it, so no harm there. The Jackets have just inbound it from their own baseline. And the chance to get in within one or a three-point play will tie it up. And they inbound it to Green. Green dumps it to McConnell. Back outside, it comes to Stanley. Stanley dishes it right back to McConnell on the, like a handoff. Timmy now sets the plow. Offensive motion. Goes left side to Pushkar. Further in the corner to Green. Back out to McConnell. Around the horn to Stanley. Now to Pushkar on the right. Pushkar into the lane. Throws it away. St. Vincent up with it. And uh, this is Rink up with a loose ball. And now a collision. And Rink is fouled by Chris Green for Waynesburg. Green going for the steal in backcourt. And now... Uh, we will have St. Vincent going to the line. Pushkar giving up the shot, trying to force a pass in. Rich had an open shot, about a 15-footer from the baseline, passed it up for a, uh, uh, a pass, and uh, it was an errant pass, intercepted, and uh, the ball being taken by the uh, St. Vincent Bearcats, Chris Green committing the obvious foul, stopping the clock. Rink, one and one, yeah. Ron Rink. Well, no basket, lane violation, says Frank Fryer. No good. So a lane violation by St. Vincent erases that shot by Ron Rink. He still only has six in the game. And it's 49-46. Rudy Marisa says, hey, time out. 3.09 left. St. Vincent, 49. Waynesburg, 46. We'll be back in this basketball game here at New College Gym in Waynesburg. And 49-46 uh, to score. Going to go right down to the wire. Don't be surprised if Frank Gissick's pre-broadcast prediction comes true and we see some overtime here. On the line tonight, the Jackets' four-game winning streak on the season and their 21-game winning streak at home. They have won 21 at home in a row. Have not lost since 1983 in, in February. Less than three minutes left to play. Jack is trailing by three with the ball. McConnell goes in the lane to Hamlin. Turnaround jumper. Harold is... Yeah! Chris Green around the rim, hung on the rim, finally fell 
Harold through. Chris Harold Green. Hamlin. Chris Green tipped it in. Oh, he did? Yeah. All right. So Chris Green gets the tip in. That's four for him. And St. Vincent in the fourth club with a long pass. They finally go to Obardo. Obardo starts inside. Stolen away by Hamlin in backcourt. Hamlin with the steal. They clear it to McConnell. Waysburg can take the lead with a bucket here. They trail by one. 225 left to play in the ball game. Here's McConnell in the fourth court going to Lee, who's just checked into the game. Green gets it on the left side. Back to Lee, around the horn to McConnell. On the right side to Hamlin, to Stanley, deep in the corner. Stanley turns, fires, it is no good. Rebound Lee for Wayford, out to Stanley. Stanley dumps it off, Green up, no good. Rebound St. Vincent, almost to steal in backcourt, but Marty May is there to pick it up. St. Vincent in backcourt, now with Jordan handling the basketball. Jordan, fourth court to Rink. Rink, cross court to uh, Mo Hill. 155 left to play. St. Vincent by one. They have the ball. This is uh, Randy Jordan again working against McConnell. Bounce pass to Mo Hill. Back outside to Rink near midcourt. On the right side to Obardo it goes. A minute and 40 to go in the game. Here's uh, Marty May with the basketball. Throws a long pass cross court. It goes to Mo Hill in the corner. On the left side. Underneath to Obardo. Obardo does not shoot. Had the shot underneath. Passed it up. Came back outside. And a foul called as they go to Ron Rink. Rink is fouled by Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee has uh, picked up his third foul, and that'll send uh, to the foul line, I believe, will be Ron Rink. And Ron was instrumental in the St. Vincent uh, game uh, as far as putting points on the board. 16 of them, as a matter of fact. Yeah, he sure did. Rink at the line, one and one. The shot is up, it's good. Rink the player. Yeah. Jackets, real, this could be uh, quite a loss for the Jackets. Devastating. Losing, uh, this is their uh, chance to win 22 in a row, but it looks like that's another nail on the coffin. Yeah, the Jackets just made, made them both. 51-48, a three-point basketball game with a minute and 23 left to play. Wayne Berg in the fourth court. Hamlin with the basketball. Deep in the corner on the right side. A foul away from the ball. It's going to be on who? St. Vincent. A foul away from the ball. I think Kevin McConnell will be going to the line. Yeah, Rink. Uh, on a collision off the ball while the weave was going on. Rink pushed off, knocked McConnell to the ground. Well, now McConnell with a chance to bring Rainsburg back within one if he can make both ends of this one and one. Timmy, 70% from the line coming in here tonight. First one on the way. The one and one is good. So, big one and one shot there, Frank. This really uh, sets up interesting. 51 to 49 is the score with one minute, 17 seconds to go. Well, let's see if McConnell can come through on the bonus and bring Waynesburg back within one with a minute and 17 to go. He can miss this and uh, Jackets get the rebound and tie it up. See what happens, it's up, it's good. Perfect for McConnell, he has six. It's a one point game with a minute and 17 to go. The Jackets applying full court pressure. Here we go, down the stretch. And uh, it's uh, a trap in backcourt, but they break it. Long pass to the fourth court to Obardo. He's trapped in a steal by McConnell, but a whistle on the play. Foul going to be called on Waynesburg. Holy cow. It happened right in front of me, and I never saw it. Yeah, Paul Stanley called for the foul. And really? Now Bernie Matthews wants a, a technical on Stanley. He's chirping the Dutch shampoo over there. Dutch uh, Paul reacted. Uh, well, as you might expect, he would react. And uh, no technical is a foul. A call, but we do have a one and one coming for Sean Obarto, the senior from Latrobe. That's three on Paul Stanley. So, uh, rebound, Mo Hill up and no good foul call. Mo Hill will go to the line. He's hammered by Chris Green for a two shotter, I'm sure. Chris All Green. right, into the ball game for Waynesburg. He'll replace Chris Green. So here's Mo Hill's second foul shot now. He can make it a three-point game again, and he does. Hill makes them both. 14 tonight for him. 53-50. A minute and two left to play. Waynesburg, fourth court with McConnell top of the key. McConnell dumps it off to Stanley. Stanley uh, with a move, turns, goes by a man, now turns and fires it short. Rebound is loose, up with it is St. Vincent, and it's Obardo trapped under the Waynesburg basket. The ball is loose, Stanley up with it for Waynesburg. On the steal, Stanley shoots, it's no good, way short. Rebound, St. Vincent, 43 seconds to go. Good night. Here's uh, St. Vincent in the fourth court. 
and it's Jordan with the ball. He'll bring it back outside. Now bounce pass underneath and a shot. No, a foul call. A foul call on Waynesburg. Marty May will go to the line. 31 seconds remaining. Well, Timmy McConnell picking up his foul, and uh, the Jackets uh, having a chance, but uh, what can you say? Uh, uh, shots, uh, I would say, just hasty shots. Didn't take their time, get a good, clean shot. And uh, they went to Paul Stanley to put it in. He wasn't open, and he tried for it. They forced one up, and it was way short. So uh, the air ball uh, went right to St. Vincent. And now with 31 seconds to go, uh, the man of the night for the Bearcats, the guy with the chance to lace it, is Marty May. So uh, uh, I don't know what their percentage is, is, is or what it even, uh, what even hazard a guess, but it is well below uh, their average. They came in here averaging better than 51% from the floor yeah. on the season, and they're nowhere near that. They may not even be near 40. They may be below 40. Can I borrow your razor? Ah, uh, that's right. <laughs> Frank, uh, Frank Music is getting very close to shaving. He has not shaved. That's called a close ball. shave. That's oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we shouldn't laugh. The Jackets are about well, to lose, but you have to cheer up a little bit because uh, they have a great team. And St. Vincent really well, came in what this and did a job tonight. Wow. What, what this is going to do, it's going to make, the, if, if Plainsburg does lose, it's going to make the rest of the uh, season very interesting. With a three-way tie for first as we go into uh, February. And uh, Stanley for Waynesburg. Stanley in the fourth court to Lee. Lee holds up, dumps it to Hamlin. Hamlin to the baseline. Drive, shoots, good! Harold Hamlin! 16 tonight, 53, 52, 19 seconds to go. 19 seconds to go, and they foul Jordan in backcourt. So Stanley, Stanley fouls Jordan in backcourt. Jordan will go to the line with a chance to uh, make it or break it, as they say. Well, like I said, it's a close shave tonight, John. <laughs> well, Marty May, Marty May choking a little bit there, and uh, I wouldn't get lathered up yet, Frank. Yeah, I think they found the person to foul now if they have to in the last couple of minutes. Uh, Marty May might be a, a good one to uh, send to the line. Well, their best shooter now is Randy Jordan, and he's stepping to the line. Jordan averaging on the season 15 points a ball game has 11 tonight. Had 12 against Waynesburg last week. All right. Okay, they called the, the foul on Kevin Lee. They changed that around. All right. Well, okay. One and one. Here it comes. Randy Jordan is good. Well, Jordan makes, can make it a three-point play with the bonus here. A three-point lead, I should say, with the bonus here. It's on the way. It is good. Jordan clutch foul shooting there. Makes them both. 16 seconds to go as the Jackets inbound it. Here's McConnell. Fourth court. Dumps it off. Lee shoots him outside. No good. Tap up. Stanley hit. Stanley hit. And uh, that, I'm waiting for him to call timeout. Maybe they're out of timeout. Paul I don't Stanley know. Five it. seconds to go. He called the foul on Paul Stanley on the inbounds play. And that stops the clock with five seconds. All right, going to the line will be Marty May. Didn't call right there as soon as that shot went in. I have four. Okay, now I'm not sure. Uh, we could have missed one, but uh, all right. So we have five seconds left. It's a 55-54 basketball game. Here he is, Marty May, back at the line to shoot one and one. Marty May is from Indiana, Pennsylvania. He's a senior. Five seconds left in the ball game. Jackets trail by one. May, one and one. Good. Well, there's clutch foul shooting. That makes it a two-point game. The best Waynesburg can do now is make it overtime if May misses the next. If May makes the next, well, they'll have a very nice, pleasant ride back to the Charles Will these Bearcats. Here's the second one on the way. It is good. May makes the both. And uh, now Waynesburg inbounds it to Stanley. Three seconds to go. Two seconds. He puts it up. No good. That's it. The winning streak is over. And the Jackets are in a three-way tie for first place. Now we get some people mixing it up after the ball game. And it's Jordan and Stanley mixing it up. Now over there is Wink. Other Jackets are joining the fray. Fans are coming down. Look out. It's not serious now. It's not, but it's getting more serious by the second. Harold Harold. As more people are mixing it up. Fans are coming down on the floor. Players and fans battling. And uh, this is a real dotted brook now. And uh, we see people heading for the hills. I don't blame them. It's moving our way. Let's hope that they can calm it down before it gets over here. We've had some real fisticuffs here at College Gym. 
tonight. And I really don't know who started it. It's hard to say. I frankly I didn't saw, want to see it. I saw, I watched it, John. I never, never put my head down. I saw it coming. And uh, it was definitely the uh, Jordan Stanley clash right there. And uh, they've they been going the whole time. Here we go again over on this side. Again, it's Jordan. And he's uh, starting it up with Hamlin. Again, Jordan is in the middle of it. Now we get fans battling right in front of the bleachers at the far end of the floor. I can't see him scream for what's happening, but let's see if I can stand up and check it out. I, I really can't see who's involved. I know there are players and fans involved. Stanley now mixing it up with Owen right underneath the Wayne's third basket. And now more players getting involved. Crawford is in on it now. Everybody, and this thing is totally out of control. It's going to be a long time to uh, straighten up this mess. This is totally out of control, and I don't know what's going to happen after this game, Frank, but I know that something's going to happen. This is not going to be the end of this. No, and uh, now it breaks out again. Being more deliberate, no, but the side shot up, no good, by Mo Hill. Rebound taken by May. He dishes it back to... Uh, uh, Matthews to Hill again, and he shoots from the same place and makes it. Well, he don't miss two from that same place. 